D-Day, June 6, 1944, saw the largest military amphibious landing in our history. Over 130,000 Allied troops landed on the beaches of Normandy. 56,000 of those men were young and valorous British soldiers. Around 25,000 landed on gold, and 29,000 more landed on sword. The objective of the British was to secure the port city of Caen by the first day, alongside the Canadians who landed on Juneau. The 3rd British Division was tasked with capturing Sword Beach. Despite sustaining little casualties on the beach, the advance to Caen was halted by a counter-attack on the same day, mounted by the 21st Panzer Division. They were able to repel the enemy, and by the next day, the British 3rd Division linked up with the rest of the British and Canadian elements and resumed their drive onward to Caen. To remember the efforts and valour of the 3rd British Division, I will be making a short series reviewing King and Country's DD-108 through the DD-111. The set we'll be talking about today is the first of the series, DD-108, British 3rd Infantry Division, Brent Gun Team. The set is part of the D-Day 44 British Collection. It was released in June of 2009 and was retired in August of 2012. The set comes with three 1 ratio 30 figurines. There are two riflemen, a private who is crouching and a lance corporal who is moving forward. The last figure is the Brent Gunner himself, standing upright, branded hip, ready to engage. Now before we start this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe and allow notifications to stay updated for future content. And with that being said, let's begin. The figurines stand at approximately 6 centimeters tall or around 2.5 inches, which is the standard height for King & Country's lineup. They adorn the British No. 5 battle dress uniform, which has been commonly, but incorrectly, referred to as the Pattern 37 battle dress. On their shoulders, we can see the 3rd British Division's insignia. It is a pattern of three design, which included a black triangle trisected by an inverted red triangle. The design was coined by Field Marshal Bernard Montgomery during the Second World War to create an identity for the men of the 3rd Division. He hoped that having a unique emblem on their uniform would instill pride and a sense of identity in them. Above the insignia, there is a tab that is worn to identify the soldier's regiment. However, I can't really tell which specific outfit these soldiers are from as it isn't clearly written. Then again, this is honestly a plus in my books as it leaves the soldier's regiment open to interpretation. This allows them to be used in a large variety of dioramas and not limited to a specific regiments. The Bren gun section comes equipped with the Pattern 37 webbing, consisting of the basic pouch to store ammunition. The Bren gunner has an additional pouch underneath his left basic pouch. This is known as the Bren wallet. It typically consists of tools required to maintain the Bren gun, including a dismantling tool, spare parts, as well as a cleaning kit. The kneeling private here also comes packed with a little more equipment. He has additional basic pouches attached to his webbing. This would suggest that his role in his section is to be the assistant of the Bren Gunner, as he is in charge of carrying spare magazines and occasionally additional spare barrels for the Bren. All three soldiers are wearing the P-37 haversacks on their backs. The haversack is often used to store the troops' personal effects, such as his canteen or water bottle, mess tins for cooking, spare clothing, etc. Tucked below the flap of the haversack is the poncho, which was used to cushion the back when not being worn, Soldiers would often attach the issued British Army enamel mugs on the straps of their haversacks as seen here. Additional entrenching equipment, including the British service shovel and army pickaxe would also be attached. Below the haversack, we can see the P-37E tool or entrenching tool. This was the main equipment used to dig into positions, building slit trenches and foxholes. Towards the left of the E-tool pouch is the British Mark 7 water bottle or canteen, as well as its pouch. Soldiers would sometimes carry a spare one in their haversacks. Over onto the other side, both riflemen are equipped with a Mark II lightweight gas mask as well as its pouch. This particular piece of equipment was important as the Allied forces were concerned that Germans would use gas attacks in retaliation on D-Day, which thankfully never happened. It is strange, however, that the pouch is absent from the Bren gunner. Underneath the gas mask pouch, we can see a black pointy stick poking out. This is likely discovered for the Mark II bayonet. If I'm wrong, however, do correct me in the comment section down below. 
The footwear worn by the soldiers are the British ammunition boots, otherwise known as Boots Ankle General Service or BGS. The top is wrapped with P-37 web anklets or gaiters, which were used to keep dirt, insects and other foreign objects from entering the soldiers' boots. Allied forces in World War II mainly utilized canvas anklets and gaiters as they wished to conserve leather. This was so that they can produce more boots as well as other equipment that required leather, including weapon slings and jerkin for cold weather. Moving on to the helmets, I would like to point out and apologize that in my previous video reviewing DD-113, I made a mistake and called the helmets the Mark II Brodies, when in fact, the helmets worn here are actually the newer Mark III Tortoise helmets, which was the more commonly worn helmet on D-Day. The Mark III's design provided better protection for the side of the head than its predecessor. It was a deeper helmet and had a smaller brim. It provided an overall 38% more protection than the Mark II, particularly at the sides. The helmet was often covered in a net with scrim ran through it as seen here. This was to camouflage and disrupt the shape of the helmet better. As for the weapons, the Private and Lance Corporal are both armed with the Lee Enfield Mark IV rifle. It was a standard and most commonly used rifle in the British and Commonwealth forces. The Bren Gunner, as his role suggests, fights with the Bren Light Machine Gun. It was unique in the sense that its magazines were loaded from the top. This was to make reloading the weapon when in a prone position a lot easier for the main gunner and his assistant. Now in terms of the roles of these figurines, the Lance Corporal pushing forward is likely the second IC or in command of the section. He typically took charge of the gun team. And as mentioned, the private who is crouching is the number two Brent gunner. He is meant to carry spare ammunition for the number one gunner and replace him if he was to be injured or mortally wounded. Lastly, we have the number one Brent gunner himself who bears the burden of carrying the section's heaviest weapon. During combat, the team would be in charge of laying down suppressing fire for the rest of the section to advance. These three figurines form a full gun team, and it is without saying that no British or Commonwealth section is complete without these three soldiers. I really love the sculpting and the details of these figurines. The head sculpts are as lifelike as can be for its scale, and I really love that the painters and designers in King and Country add additional details like wrinkles screaming soldiers, and miniatures in different poses. The best part of it all are the moustaches that you would typically find more of on British soldiers. I mean, what's a Tommy without a moustache, right? These tiny details really add to the personalities of the soldiers, and it really improves the dynamic and look of any diorama these figurines are in. I really like this set. It serves as a good starter piece for any collector and only stands to add more to a diorama instead of cluttering it. Even though it has been discontinued, you can always look them up on eBay or any resale sites. Some of King Country's official distributors may have a few leftovers in their storage or may be able to backorder them. Now I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it informative, and if you did, please like and subscribe, and I will do my best to deliver more of such content in the future. Thank you all for watching, and happy collecting!